Welcome into the Like a Mobile Jaguars Jam Week 2 edition. J.P. Shadrick, Taven Bryan is our guest today. Good to see you. What's up, man? Uh, nothing, just hanging out. Yeah, oh, hanging out. Big week. Week 2. Patriots coming to town. Home opener. Everything's happening this week, right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, this is a, it's a fun environment coming up uh, this Sunday. Uh, this is UK-based, so we're going to get some questions from the UK media, some fans in the UK, and uh, we'll go through them. You ready? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's knock it out. Starting with number one today from Give Me Sport, Alex Johnson has the first question today. Uh, how did you go from an offensive tackle prospect to a first-round pick at D-tackle? See, I don't think I realized that you were an offensive lineman at one point. Uh, yeah, I actually never played defense. They didn't let me play defense. In high school? Yeah. I was an offensive left tackle. Really? Yeah. Why the switch, and when did that change? Uh, you know, it, it was because I really wanted to play defense, and uh, I had no offers. I had no offers pretty much defense anywhere, and then uh, Muschamp offered me at Florida for defense, and so I, uh, I just want to take it. I want to try out defense. You know, you seem like a, a defensive type of guy I, I don't picture you as an offensive lineman just personality wise you know <laughs> that's a it's a compliment I think you know I mean yeah yeah but uh you know offensive tackle was pretty fun you know I had a good time at it you know you could really like you kind of get an advantage because you know when everything is you know when the snap count is you can really hop on top of somebody and, like really drive them and stuff so it was pretty sweet like you could really you could really be at the front of the attack you know so yeah. it was cool well now you get to go tackle the quarterback yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, you that's pretty fun, yeah. too. Right? That, that's a fun <laughs> part of this thing. Question number two from Ed Dowdle of Unilad. How do you prepare to face the greatest quarterback of all time in Tom Brady? Do you guys look at it like that? Or is it, hey, man, just another week, and he's obviously very, very good. How do you guys balance Tom Brady this week? Um, You know, I think we just uh, do it like any other day. I mean, obviously he is very good at what he does, and uh, you just got to go out there. You got to attack the weaknesses, what they have. Um. You know, obviously he's a great quarterback, and uh, you know he's pretty good at what he does. But you know, he just got to attack what uh, what they're weak at. He's been in the league almost as long as you've been alive. How long has he been in? And this is nineteenth year. Nineteenth. Yep. Yep. So I'd have been uh, I'd have been three. Three years old. Three years old. He was a rookie. <laughs> How about that? It's pretty yep. incredible, right? Yeah, that's that's a minute. Everybody's got a, a memory of him coming up the last nineteen years. Though. I mean, I, I'm sure you grew up watching him too. You know, in the playoffs and such. Right? Yeah, I was. I'm honestly still surprised that he's here. I, he's been there forever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, when the when the lights come on Sunday, man, it's just another game, right? I mean, it, it, yeah, I get it. It's Tom Brady, but you got to go beat him. Yeah, you know? yeah. You definitely got to get a sack against him too. You know? That would be that'd nice be, for the nice. resume, yeah. right? Yeah, it really would. Let's continue <laughs> with another media question from Anthony Wooten of Love Sport Radio. What's the first bit of advice Calais Campbell gave you? I know you guys are getting pretty close in that locker room. Um, maybe just as a rookie, just hustle. Just make sure you're hustling. Because you kind of go from a uh, you know position of being a starter the whole time, you know, taking all the reps and stuff. So you kind of start back at the bottom, and he's like, you know, you just got to hustle again. And, one and of those things. We've we've talked to him about y'all's relationship because we see guys talking on the practice field all the time. He's at he's after you after reps, and, and at least in training camp he was. I, I, he's got to be a great guy to learn from. Cause he's been in the league for what 10, 11 years now. That's got to be a great resource for you. That's yeah, I was I was twelve when he was playing. <laughs> I was twelve. I think I was in middle school football. Yeah, D. Morgan Comets. So he's he's been around a minute. I I actually distinctly remember seeing him play. So really, yeah, yeah. How about that? That's kind of wild, huh? That really. And now he's right <laughs> across the locker room from you. He's you, still here. Yep. You can go to him anytime <laughs> you need to. Let's continue with a fan question now. Kevin Rates has this question: Is the skill gap between the NFL and college big, or did you feel as strong as in college? Yeah, that's the big difference. A lot of times, that maybe the speed of the game changes a bit in the NFL. I know we're a week in, but what differences so far have you seen? Um, I think this is one of those things where it's the, it's the cream of the, the crop again. You know, they just they just keep cutting the cream of the crop each level you get to. You know, you get a little bit better. It's still the same guys a lot of time, yeah. but they're they're definitely more concentrated. I would think. You know, so they're instead of just being, you know, a couple guys. You know, it's like everybody's pretty good. So. That's Everybody the was the best at their high school. Everybody was the best at their college. Yeah. All, these, all these guys were drafted high. and mm -hmm. uh, exactly how it is. A lot of alpha males in the locker room that play good football. Another fan question. Tom Cox asking, uh, what aspect of your first NFL game surprised you the most? Anything stand out last week that uh, opened your eyes maybe a little bit in New York? Um, I think it's probably like how we don't, like they don't try to trick people as much anymore. That's probably the biggest thing for me. Uh, I just remember in college all the time, like, I mean, you could get any formation and they'd run anything out of it. You know, they'd run screens, like stuff you'd be like, no, you can't do that. And they'd do it anyways. But uh, with the NFL, I think it's very, it's very consistent and it's very predictable. 
but it's very spot on. Like, you know, sometimes they'll switch some people up, but it's very – they run the same thing out of certain personnel. Yeah, and there was there were certain coordinators and stuff that, you know, at least a few years ago there was that read option stuff and the spread came in for a minute. Yeah. It didn't last long, though, because you can adjust faster here. Defenses yeah. catch on pretty quick to this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's exactly what happened, and uh, it kind of died out a little bit. It so. did. It did. Uh, Ed Dowdle, back to a media question from Unilad. Uh, is it a huge? Uh, it's a huge ask to come onto arguably the league's best line as a rookie and make an impact. How tough has it been to step in with Calais Campbell and Malik and Darius, just to name a few? Uh, I don't think it's really been tough. I think it's more been a blessing. Uh, I mean, very rarely do you come into a place that's going to have as many good defensive linemen. I mean, it's just going to open up opportunities for everybody because you know you can't you can't double team that one good dude if everybody's good. So I mean, that's it's kind of a sweet deal. I mean, uh, most time you're used to getting double teamed, and now it's like one on one blocks because they're more worried about Clayus, you know, or Jan or Dante or something like that, you know. So frees me up. Yeah, and, and everybody got a bite last week, which was nice to see. It was it was, it was a nice day rushing. Uh, against Eli last week. Yeah, yeah, two sacks. It was really nice. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> uh, fan question now. This is from at Scott Bradley, and this is a little different. This is outside the dorm here. What is your favorite flavor of chip? I'm thinking potato chip here. Potato chips? Um, I think the Tostitos. It's the lime ones. Have you ever tried the lime ones? I have The Tostito lime. There's like a lime flavored one. Those ones are really good. Oh, the hint of lime. Hint like, of lime. Uh, yep. Is that what they yep. are? Yeah. Best ones. Best ones. Yeah. Those are the best. For you? Yeah, I like those the best. Those on the uh, the barbecue uh, Fritos. Uh, those, are the, those are those little twisty ones, right? You yeah. ever had those? Yeah, the little Frito things. Yeah. Are good. I, what about like salt and vinegar? I love salt and vinegar. I do like salt and vinegar, but I, I used to like the old Pringles one that came in a can. Mm, those yeah, those are, are the best. They still ones. have those, by the way. Pringles. Yeah. That's yeah. still a thing. I don't know about in the UK, <laughs> but, but maybe in the US it is. Uh, Zaps out of Louisiana, also a very good chip. Isn't chip something different there, though? No, you know, that's a fry, right? Fr yeah, that's, like French that's fries? where we're confused here, because you can't have different flavors of fries. It's just fries. I mean, you could have like, you can have like yams or sweet potato sweet fries. Sweet potato fries. Then you can have like some sauces on them and stuff. Oh, we'll answer it that way then. Uh, on, on French fries slash chips in the UK, what do you prefer? Um, Probably cheese and bacon. Cheese and bacon fries. Yeah. Chips. And, chips. Whatever. Yeah. Sounds that's good. what they wanted. You're making me hungry now. <laughs> I've got news for you. Tave and Brian with us on the ja Like a Mobile Jaguars Jam. Back to a media question now. Roger Goodgrove's a double coverage. Uh, you decided to forego uh, your final year at Florida to join the draft. It worked out well. Were all your friends and family supportive of that decision? And will you look to finish college? Or have you even really thought about that since you've been here? Um, early, right? Honestly, I haven't even thought about it. I've just been trying to, you know, just trying to try to make the team and like try to be a professional at what I do. And, uh, you know, it's kind of taken up a lot of my time. And uh, I'll definitely look to it in the offseason because that's probably what I should do. Yeah, I so. mean, how long do you have left, I guess? I have six credits. Oh, that's not. I mean, See, I have on. two classes. You can knock that out. <laughs> come on, right? Yeah. But the focus is here. And I, I, you're mm -hmm. a pro for a reason. Uh, fan question now Chris Parker, how difficult is it learning a new playbook? How different is a playbook here as opposed to the University of Florida? Um, well, I got pretty lucky. Uh, we kind of have a similar scheme here. Uh, the only downside is to it is I'm not playing uh, three technique. I'm playing big end. So that's why I'm a little I'm a little slow at times. I can see it too because, you know, uh, I'm not used to playing big end and I'm trying to get better at it. Uh, it's just the timing difference because a lot of times a three technique, everything's quick and, like, you got one step, make a move, do something like that. Uh, playing big end, there's a lot more responsibility. Uh a lot more responsibility. It's a lot yeah, of pressure. Sure. Uh, you know, you got tight ends lining up outside you. You can't have them come inside, stuff like that. So it's, it's just a lot more rules, you know, but it's the same scheme pretty much. You know, it's go forward, go get the quarterback. You know, not much gap scheming or two gapping. But three techniques, definitely where it's at, though, because, you know, you just – you pretty much have no no rules. Just what get you can up do. field, baby. Yeah. That's pretty much plays. what it's about, right? Mm -hmm. Ask Malik Jackson. He, he knows yeah. all about that. Yeah, he just goes and make plays. He's pretty darn good <laughs> at it, too. Uh, final question here. This is the Jag Tag question of the week from uh, one of the UK's Jag Tag participants brought to you by LGT Vestra US. Jag Tag's a simplified version of American football, played in elementary schools, high schools, and community projects around England. Over 3,000 participants. And this week's question, Taven, is from Abdi Kamara. Aged 11 in Weatherby School in London, does facing Tom Brady on Sunday excite the Jags' defense or create a little panic? What do you guys – I mean, we kind of touched on this a moment ago. And, and I talked to the guys in the locker room this week, a couple of guys, uh, Miles Jack and, and uh, Tashawn Gibson. He kind of knows what's going to happen before it's going to happen. 
How do you guys react to Tom Brady when he's back there under center and looking at what you guys are doing? You know, um, I think it just depends on the on the group you're with, and I think with this group, um, I think they're excited. I mean, some people are probably going to be afraid of him, you know, because obviously he's good at what he does, and uh, you know he's a great quarterback, and he can he definitely runs his offense well. Uh, I think with this team, I think we're excited because you know not not too many times you get to you know take a shot at the goat. So I mean, we got a lot of opportunities to go, you know, take a shot at the goat, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a great opportunity. Take a shot at the goat, the greatest of all time, Tom yep. Brady, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to it, man. This yes, is going to be a fun week. Yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> Appreciate your time today. Yeah, no problem. Taven Bryan joining us on the Like a Mobile Jaguars Jam.